Welcome to this prestige lecture hosted by, by the Northwest University Research Unit Self-Directed Learning and the UNESCO Chair on Multimodal Learning and Open Education Resources. This lecture, Meta Literacies and its role in self-directed learning will be presented by Prof. Thomas Mackey and Professor Trudy Jacobson. Gathered virtually here this afternoon, we have well, actually 79 registered participants from 18 different institutions and 12 countries. And that's why I started off with um, so many time zones this afternoon, afternoon here with us. This is a first for self-directed learning and an indication of the importance of our colleagues, of the topic of our colleagues under discussion today. I would like to welcome our colleagues from the research unit, self-directed learning, colleagues from the Faculty of Education, research directors, school directors, deputy school directors, other colleagues from other faculties at our university, as well as other universities in South Africa. And then of course, we also want to welcome our guests from our two esteemed pres presenters, that's colleagues from the State University of New York, including Empire State College and university, the University of Albany. And then, of course, also attendees of all over the world. Last but not least, a warm welcome to our two presenters and our extraordinary professors at our research unit, Professor Thomas Mackey and Professor Trudy Jacobson. Unfortunately, I have to excuse myself in about an half an hour to present a paper virtually at another international um, conference. So I want to take the opportunity now to thank Prof. Jaco Ulifida and his team from the UNESCO chair for organizing this lecture today. Prof. Jaco, thank you very much. And then over to you to introduce our guests this afternoon. Thank you very much, Prof. Elsa. It's a privilege to uh, present these two speakers uh, who visited us in uh, at the Northwest University in 2009, uh, 19, apologies, and uh, who've become friends of Northwest. We welcome Professor Thomas Mackey and uh, or Tom Mackey and Professor Trudy Jacobson, who just published their book uh, with uh, ALL Neil Schumann entitled Meta Literacy in a Connected World, Developing Learners as Producers. And in this publication, self-directed learning was also quite prominent. But more, to, more about the speakers. Uh, professor Thomas Mackey is Professor of Arts and Media in the School of Arts and Humanities at the State University of New York Empire State College in the USA. He is also uh, now um, in the esteemed position of being the Dr. Susan H. Turban Chair in Mentoring. His research focuses on meta-literacy, a pedagogical framework he originated with Professor Jacobson. And this framework develops individuals as self-directed learners in participatory information environments. Professor Mackey um, is interested in the intersections among meta-literacy, self-directed learning, and multimodality to prepare meta-literate learners as collaborative and informed producers of information. He has published extensively, including multiple books and peer-reviewed articles, and he teaches online courses in digital arts and has developed several international MOOCs about meta-literacy. The other co-presenter, Professor Trudy Jacobson, is a distinguished librarian emerita at the University at Albany, State University of New York, also in the United States of America. She has been involved uh, deeply with teaching and information literacy throughout her career, and she's, she co-chaired the Association of College and Research Libraries Task Force that created the framework for information literacy for higher education. Professor Jacobson is interested in exploring the relationship between open pedagogy, meta literacy, and self-directed learning. She regularly taught an information literacy course for upper level undergraduates that used Wikipedia editing as a way to understand the core concepts of meta literacy and information literacy. She serves as a mentor each semester to an instructor new to teaching using Wikipedia. She's a co author and co editor of 14 books, including four about meta literacy, and she's received the ACRL Miriam Dudley Instruction Award in 2009. Um, from my side, it's, it's a privilege to have you two here. You are the, the, the experts, the, um, uh, I would want to say the, the creators of the whole concept of meta of course. And uh, I think it's, it's even increasingly important for us to talk about 
uh, metal literacy uh, uh, in these times. But over to you, uh, Professor Tom, Professor Trudy, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you so much, uh, Yako and Elsa, for the warm welcome. We are so happy to be here today. And of course, we do remember the journey to South Africa in 2019. It was a, a, a tremendous uh, trip for us, and we appreciated that opportunity very much. So we'll move forward here um, and just give you an overview of what we'll be talking about. Uh, we, we are working with themes from the new book, and we'll show how closely aligned these are with self-directed learning. So we'll talk about meta-literacy in a connected world, developing self-directed learners as producers, because this idea of learners as producers is so important to the new book. We'll be develop, talking about the development of a meta-literacy mindset. Uh, we'll explore the meta-literacy framework in detail, and then we'll provide opportunities for everyone to ask us questions. So we're looking forward to that interactivity. This is all within this context of meta-literacy in a connected world. And we know that the connected world offers so much creative potential uh, opportunities for social interaction and opportunities really for creativity and for our students to develop and produce information. But we also know that it's an environment of misinformation, disinformation, and conspiracy theories. So how do we effectively prepare our students for such a complex connected world? Let's talk a little bit about uh, some framing here to talk about information or meta-literacy and, and how it evolved from this concept of information literacy. This quote from James Markham, I think really um, uh, it sets, sets it in a, in, a, in a useful way for us today because he really talks about how information literacy itself was much too limited in scope, um, that it was much too focused on uh, skill development. And what he really had vision for is this social technical fluency. So he really was able to envision the world that we're in now where it's very much focused on social technologies. So he was really interested, think about this, back in 2002 of moving forward with an information literacy that was much broader in, in scope. So that definitely influenced us uh, in our development of meta-literacy. Another key aspect here, and here's another author we, we cited in that very first article, um, because it really focuses on this, this consumer producer dynamic, which has been discussed for some time. And what she really says here is that in our efforts uh, to recognize information access, which continues to be obviously a, a major concern today, that it's not just about consumerism, that information access is not just about being a consumer of that information, but it's also about being a producer. And the way that she puts it here is that about individuals and groups of people actively shaping their world as knowledge producers. And what she says here is in doing so, it really renders this, this consumer producer dichotomy as, as irrelevant. So that's, some, that's another goal that we're, we're working toward as we really try to focus on learners as producers and not just consumers. Now here's an example of a uh, well-known um, uh, approach to information literacy from uh, 22 years ago uh, that really shows the issues here that Markham and Pauli really talked about. This is very much a skills-based approach to information literacy. So it's really about determining an information need, uh, accessing uh, information effectively, being able to evaluate the information, be able to incorporate it, use it, and understand some of these, these uh, the larger context for information. All of these things are very important, but it's very uh, skills-based and doesn't fully address uh, the needs in terms of where we are today. So these are very much uh, skills for consuming information. There's some hint of, production through the idea of using it, but not to the extent that we're talking about today. And I think this image really captures it well, this idea of um, being in a library, looking through the stacks to a computer lab. And we could take that even further today because we're not just in computer labs, we're at home and we're on the move and we're, we're always moving with our mobile devices. So it's much more than just consuming information, it's also being uh, a producer and participant. 
So those are some of the ideas that really kind of frame this concept for us in, a, in our work together in developing uh, meta-literacy. So here's just a quick definition, the early definition, and then we'll delve into this much further. So that we see meta-literacy as this comprehensive and unified framework. It's very much from the perspective of the individual. So that this idea of a comprehensive framework is really for the individual so that it unifies uh, these themes from an individual perspective. It also promotes critical thinking, collaboration, and effective participation in social media and online communities. And again, when we first developed this in 2010, 2011, that's really, those were some of the major influences, this dynamic social media environment. We've really expanded it since then, but it gives you a sense that this really goes beyond just consuming information and basic skills to really have a, a broader understanding um, of these issues. Um, Meta-literacy also supports acquiring information, but also producing and sharing knowledge collaboratively. So this idea of producing things is important, but we also go beyond that and really thinking about how people produce and share knowledge as individuals and uh, in working with others. So overall, this very much, uh, this framework really was intended to challenge those skills-based approaches to information liter nation literacy, which were clearly uh, in the conversation at the time and continue to be important. So let's now talk about the idea of developing self-directed learners as producers. And given the uh, expertise uh, at Northwest University in self-directed learning, uh, learning, I think that this will really resonate. Um, and it's such an important part of uh, the framework as well. And I think you'll, you'll see that as we draw this out. And I'm gonna hand this over now to Trudy, who's gonna talk about this vis visualization she created just for today's presentation and it, it maps out some of these overarching concepts. Trudy? Thank you, Tom. Um, so you see here, uh, first I should point out, uh, it's a circular image. We have a lot of circular images that you will be seeing today, but the meta-literate learner or the individual that Tom was talking about is at the center of this diagram. Overarching it is the metacognitive learning domain. You see that at the top. And to the left and the right are uh, two critical attributes of such learners. And that is the critical thinking and the self-directed learning, both of which are, are immensely important in today's world. So a learner is scaffolded often by teachers in their learning journey and is engaged in a social context that is made up of others with peers playing an important role. Um, so this really sort of maps out some of the core components. And Tom, would you like to take us forward to talk more about critical thinking? Absolutely. I think this is a, an ex excellent visualization of where we want to go with this. So think about this as, uh, as we work through these different uh, components. Uh, the idea of critical thinking uh, clearly is, is continues to be important. Uh, we talked about in that very first article about you know critical you know promoting critical thinking in this this digital age of you know social technologies. Uh, of course, this excellent quote from uh, Brookfield really gets to this as well. So that what he's talking about is we do critical thinking so we can take informed action. So clearly this connection between critical thinking and what we do. So a focus on the cognitive and also the behavioral and that, that connection. So that he describes actions that are grounded in evidence can be explained to others. So there's this important research component, there's an important communication piece. Uh, and also he goes on to say that, and stand a good chance of achieving the results we desire. So that it's really an informed uh, uh, approach to critical thinking that leads to action. Um, and think about how important that is today in a connected world, in a world of misinformation and disinformation, how clearly we, we really need these kinds of, uh, this kind of development uh, in, in, in our learners. And of course, uh, self-directed learning, uh, this is such you know, a, a famous quote that's often used by Malcolm Knowles. And I think because it, it really just maps out so many key aspects of self-directed learning, and we can connect all of these to meta-literacy, this idea that 
uh, self-directed learning is a process in, in which individuals take initiative. Uh, so they are empowered to really act, that they are motivated to, to take action. Um, and this is important too, that with or without the help of others. So it might be something that they do individually. It might be something they do with a teacher or a mentor in a kind of scaffolding approach. And it also is something that can happen collaboratively. So this idea of self-directed learning doesn't mean in isolation. Um, it means that it could be it could happen on in any of these uh, uh, approaches. And it's also important that as a self-directed learner, learner that they are able to diagnose their learning needs, uh, formulate their learning goals. So again, they can take charge of their learning, uh, identify human and material resources for learning. So think about that that kind of context, even in, in a digital environment where uh, they're working with a team or they're they're imagining uh, and doing research for uh, digital materials, uh, and that they also choose and implement appropriate learning strategies. Again, that's that's taking charge, that's uh, in being empowered, uh, and also the fact that they can also evaluate learning outcomes and that they can assess their own learning. So this quote, I think, really maps it out really well. There's so much uh, complexity here with just this one uh, quote. Now, another key aspect of this, and this ties to uh, metacognition. So there's a, there's a nice alignment here between self-directed learning and how we can make that happen through a meta, metacognitive approach. In many ways, the meta and meta-literacy does uh, focus on metacognition. And so this is an idea that we've been developing uh, as well. Uh, and we've traced this back to the work of Flavel, um, who really talks about this in an interesting way. And he he also kind of talks about the, you know, the, the, the whole person and the, the multiple learning domains through his work. And in this quote, he really talks about the importance of uh, kind of reflective learning and, and how that provides the individual with uh, insights about their own learning so that such situations provide opportunities for thoughts and feelings about your own thinking to arise so that we gain new insights about our role as, as learners. And notice too that that's, that has a, a cognitive component and also this effective component as well. But the second part of this quote is important too because what he says is that in many cases it calls for the kind of quality control that metacognitive experiences can supply. So that's very much about the learner really taking charge, being able to evaluate their learning, um, not just relying on sort of the, the, the thoughts and feelings, but having that quality control aspect as well, which again, brings in the critical thinking and the self-directed learning. So again, there's, there's so much that we can draw from this, uh, this metacognitive piece that's a, that's a part of the meta-literacy framework. And it's interesting uh, in, in the new book, we took, we kind of took a, a, another look at Bloom's taxonomy, which of course has been around since the 1950s and it's been so influential. And what's interesting about this is that the, the revised Bloom's taxonomy in 2001 built into the, their, uh, the, this uh, system, this learning system, a, a metacognitive dimension. So the original Bloom's was very focused on the cognitive, the effective, and also the behavioral, behavioral, but it didn't really have a, a, a there was some mention of uh, reflective learning, but it, it didn't have a fully developed metacognitive approach. So it's interesting to point to this, that because of all the work from Flavel and, and so many other uh, um, researchers, that the influence of metacognition had such a, a, a profound impact on this revision of Bloom's. And, What's also interesting about this is that um, this is a visual representation that we've included in the book because it's an, it's an open resource from uh, the Vanderbilt, Vanderbilt University Center for Teaching. And they provide this visualization of another really important change in Bloom's. So what they did was through this revision, they replaced the synthesis of information with creating information, again, showing how uh, important this idea of producing information is. And of course, synth the synthesis of information is very important too. Um, and that's still you know, built into this, but this kind of uh, pyramid really places create at the top of this, uh, 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 of this kind of scaffolded approach so that it's really about sort of remembering concepts, understanding uh, ex concepts, being able to explain those concepts, being able to apply knowledge, 
again, using information in different kinds of situations, the analytical piece, being able to analyze, drawing connections, the evaluation, which is clearly important. It's always been a, an important part of information literacy, but again, uh, a focus on uh, the production of new and original work, which, in, which involves designing, assembling, construction, uh, construction, developing, formulating, being an author. And I think that you'll see some of these concepts as we, we look at the meta literacy framework as well. But I just think that's such a great visualization of why this, this matters. And then, of, co of course, Paulo Freire, uh, again, his critique of the, the banking concept of, of uh, uh, education, you know, that's obviously learners are not just you know, we're, they're not just there for us to pot, to deposit, you know, knowledge into them, that they are really an active part of their world. So that what he puts forward, of course, is this problem posing approach to education that really liberates us all because it's really about dialogue and what he, he talks about is unveiling reality. Uh, so that a person is always engaged in their, in their world. Um, and this particular quote is, is one of my favorites because uh, it talks about this idea of production is not just material goods. So he says that it is as transforming and creative beings that humans in their permanent relations with reality produce not only material goods, tangible objects, but also social institutions, ideas, and concepts. So very much, so very often in the academy, we, we, we talk about uh, producing knowledge. And I think in many ways, this is what that is about, this idea of the the person in, in their world um, really producing ideas because uh, it's about producing knowledge and institutions and, and concepts. Um, but the, the idea of sort of what we, pro we produce and sort of the, the artifacts, whether they're material or digital, I do think is important, but there's so much more complexity to this as well. And of course, another key aspect of this, and again, built on you know, decades of, of research going back to Piaget is this idea of the social construction of knowledge that we are social learners, um, that we don't just learn in uh, isolation, that, that we really uh, uh, learn by working with others. And of course, the outcome of that, that that's of course been around uh, this idea of constructivism. Um, and this is a great quote, because this is actually a quote from a, from these two authors who wrote a book about uh, building online communities. Um, and here their definition of constructivism is active, isn't involved with constructing rather than acquiring knowledge. Again, that's that echoes this, this idea of not just consuming information or consuming knowledge, but actually uh, you know, producing it. So that individuals learn through interaction with their world, very much like the, the, in terms of what Freire is talking about, and develop knowledge through social interaction rather than individual exploration. And I think it can actually be both, but I think this really foregrounds the importance of that social interaction and learning so that there's so much potential, especially the, the collaborative aspect of this. And this is where I think the social technologies can be so critically important that it can be about knowledge production and not just about sharing misinformation. So there's, there's so much potential here that we have to look at. And Trudy now is gonna talk about also the importance of scaffolding of learning. So as instructors, we all know that it, it really is important for us to provide this scaffolding to our students. And Riser says that scaffolding is the key strategy in cognitive apprenticeship in which students can learn by taking increasing responsibility and ownership for their role in complex problem solving with the structure and guidance of more knowledgeable mentors and or teachers. Um, so Reiser's talking about the important cognitive aspect primarily of scaffolding of apprenticeship. But effective scaffolding really does need to go beyond the cognitive learning domain. Uh, some of that could be part of that complex problem solving that he mentions. Um, but the social dimension of learning is important. Tom was talking about that. And the role of the teacher uh, really involves these other learning domains when they are scaffolding, such as the affective and the metacognitive. So in the next slide, we are going to 
start talking about developing a meta literacy mindset. So, um, meta literacy isn't just about skills um, or knowing certain facts or procedures, it involves a way of thinking, a mindset that shapes the way an individual interacts with others. Um, and while this interaction often involves information, consider for a moment the role that information plays in our lives. It's omnipresent, so much so that we often don't consciously think about it. So when we're thinking about this meta-literacy mindset, how we see ourselves in connection with information is critical. So metacognition, as mentioned in this quote, is really important, sort of the overarching meta-literacy learning domain that leads to the self-regulation that encourages self-directed learning. But being reflective isn't enough. Individuals have to engage with others in shared communities, as the quote mentions, in a number of different ways. So we're going to step through the elements of meta-literacy and see how a meta-literate mindset can be developed and the impact that this can have on an individual and those around them. So we're going to go to another circular diagram. Uh, this is an integrated diagram of the meta-literacy model with the meta-literate learner at the center. Um, the color blocks beyond that are the learning domains, the next ring are the characteristics and the outer ring is the, um, the roles. So um, we've talked a little bit about a number of these elements, um, but what we're going to do um, is delve more deeply into each of these rings in the diagram. One component of meta-literacy that you don't see here because it just was impossible to get into the diagram are the goals and learning objectives. And so we'll be stepping through those a little bit later separately. So on the next slide are the learning domains. Um, and we'll start, um, often teaching and learning emphasizes the cognitive and the behavioral. So we can start with those on the right-hand side of the screen. So the cognitive is what one knows when learning is completed, um, or it could be what one brings to the learning situation. Um, comprehension, organization, application, evaluation are all cognitive aspects. Um, the behavioral is what one is able to do either during or sort of after learning has taken place. The learning domains on the left are ones that are less often considered, but are really very critical. So on the bottom, the effective, um, which would be changes in a learner's emotions or attitudes, either after the learning has taken place or what one brings to the learning or even feels during it. So it's really, um, uh, it can happen at any point. Um, and then the metacognitive, which we have been talking about, and that's an thinking about your own thinking, thinking about your own learning, what it is that you still need to know, um, what preconceptions you have, um, and it also helps to drive self-directed learning. Okay. So the learning domains um, are really important. And when we teach students about them, and um, they have reactions uh, because they don't always think about those, particularly on the left. And on the next slide, um, you'll see a student's quote. Um, this was a senior um, who reflected on the affective learning domain and said, um, you know, it relates to our feelings about what we've learned. Um, he just sort of become aware of this, really conscious of it. And so he said he thinks this best learning takes place um, when thinking about the affective, um, going from helpless and clueless to motivated and reassured. So uh, that I think highlights the importance. And as you can see on the uh, graphic on the right, going from can't to can. Okay. 
So let's move on to the meta-literate learner roles. These were the ones that were on the outer ring of the integrated model. And there are a number of learner roles. We've called out four of them here. Um, so let me just mention a couple of these and then a couple that um, aren't uh, specifically highlighted. So one is researcher. Um, Tom has been talking about the importance, say, of being a researcher to critical thinking. Um, you know, you're asking those critical questions, uh, challenging biases of others, um, and then maybe um, bringing that back to yourself through the affective learning domain. There's the idea of producer. Um, this shows up in the create in Bloom's taxonomy, um, but are you actually producing this information or um, creations for others to share? I'd like to mention two others, translator and teacher, that are on the right-hand side of this diagram. Translator isn't necessarily translating from one language to another, but translating ideas for people who might be at a different level of understanding of a topic. So um, as teachers, we often translate complex ideas so that our students who are learning will understand them. Uh, students may take what they have learned and translate them into something that perhaps their friends will understand. And then there's the role of teacher. Um, students usually do not think of themselves as teachers um, because they are learners, but we all know things that we can share with others. And you'll notice that there may be some overlap in some of the roles here. So researcher, participant, communicator, translator, author, teacher, collaborator, producer, publisher. Um, and we'll talk about that um, in just a minute. Okay. So one of the rules, roles we just examined um, is producer. And this is just a real world example of um, sort of challenging students to think of themselves as producers. I was teaching a first year, first semester course of students and they were learning about meta-literacy and I wanted to put their new consciousness and understanding into practice. I said we were gonna create a website that was going to contain content that would help other first year students, either that same semester or in the future, who um, really wanted to learn about what it's like, what you need to know as a first year student. Okay, so in small groups, they created an FAQ, zines, videos, infographics, so they really needed to engage with um, what was sort of new to them still. Um, and they were using media that may, may be unfamiliar with. Um, and, so they, and they were taking on roles beyond producer. So they were being authors of say the zine content, teachers of others. So this was a real stretch for these students. It was also in the middle of COVID. So most of them were um, not even on campus, but some were. Um, some opted out, but others really um, engaged with this. And um, the scaffolding that I provided through meta literacy and the support and assistance of their peers really helped them. And what I thought was really great was they wanted to have a record of who contributed to this. And it was their uh, student's suggestion that this picture be taken on Zoom and used on the site. And on the next screen, you'll see just one example of a, a zine that one group created. So they came up with their top 10 tips for being a first year student. One of the students was on campus, was able to take pictures. Um, and there really was a sense of pride. Um, and they really understood that they were taking on these roles, taking them on responsibly, and we're using the learning domains as they went through 
what was a somewhat uncomfortable process for them. On the next slide, um, this is a student from another course reflecting on the collaborator role, but could apply to the students in my first year course. Um, and this student mentioned that information is best understood in a group where you can see many viewpoints and interpretations. Um, and it also has the ability to yield the most results. So this makes me think back to what Tom was saying about self-directed learning, not necessarily just being a individual, an individual endeavor, um, but can be done in collaboration with others. And just one more reflection, and this is on the teacher role. Um, again, this is a student in the, the upper level class, um, but I was really struck by what she wrote in a reflection. The fact that I feel that I am teaching others what I have learned while also learning myself is something I have never done in a class, let alone at all before. Possibly she had done it before, but really hadn't been consciously thinking about this. And her reflection went on to say sort of how proud she was that she was able to, um, to participate in this way. At this point, I'm going to turn it back over to Tom to talk about the characteristics. Thanks so much, Trudy. And it is so important. Those, those reflections from students really show how uh, th this idea of being metacognitive within this sort of model really works because it, it, it provides students with this sort of deeper um, reflection on, on their own learning and the, the roles that they play as learners. As we develop the meta-literacy model, I think um, it's interesting that this, this part of it um, really emerged as, as we were thinking through our last book, which was really about the post-truth world. So we were really conscious, I think, of sort of this environment that had turned from this, uh, this connected world of this space where so much, there's so much potential for innovation and creativity and social interaction to one that was clearly uh, had a lot to do with misinformation and disinformation. So I think it's important to think about that context for, for these characteristics. And another part of it too, is that as we were developing the model, we wanted to think about the, you know, the roles, the domains, and in many ways, sort of like uh, the, the kind of outcome of, of that work. So what, what are the characteristics that we want learners to gain uh, as meta-literate learners? So some of these uh, characteristics are clearly aligned with the meta-literate learner roles. Clearly the, the productive characteristic is, is you know, from being a producer, either an individual or a collaborative producer of information, it's, it's in many ways something that to strive toward is to, to being uh, uh, productive and reflective of one's own work. And we then also tried to, um, I think, expand the framework a little bit more. Uh, this idea of openness uh, was a part of the, the model from the, the very start, but as a characteristic, what does that mean for an individual? Uh, it really means being open to new ideas, to new insights, to new learning situations. Um, the idea of being open in, in a kind of connected world uh, also means that one has empathy for others in these social communities um, so that someone is open to working with others uh, and to being a teacher. Um, so there's so much there with that, that kind of open-ended characteristic. Um, and another one is we thought was important that was also an idea really from the start, but the, the idea of a characteristic allowed us to formulate this in a more concrete way, which is being adaptable. So in many ways, this idea of, uh, you know, if, in these kinds of digital environments, we know that sometimes students have anxieties about, you know, working with technology, they might not have access, um, the technologies are always changing. And this is something actually faculty <laughs> experience as well. I think we all do as the technologies change. So how can one as a lifelong learning process and as a self-directed learner be adaptable to these different kinds of environments? I think there's a connection here as well to being open, but um, we also wanted to make sure that it was kind of a, a being critical as well. So it's not just changing as the technology cha changes, 
It's really about asking good questions about those technologies. For instance, asking good questions about uh, proprietary social media and search engines that that um, really take your data. So sort of what are, you, what are you giving up in using these kinds of uh, commercial platforms? Being able to ask good questions ab about that um, and also being flexible in, in, in working with these environments and these technologies. And then another key aspect that we added, uh, again, thinking about the post-truth world and, and this contentious sometimes, uh, very often a kind of connected world is that uh, if this is a social interaction, we learn from each other. Uh, what are what what is it to be civic minded in these environments? Um, sort of what can we give back? What kinds of responsibilities do we have to our communities? Um, because clearly, in a connected world, the idea of being connected is not enough. We also have to think about the responsibilities uh, that we have in these environments and the the ethical aspect as well. Um, so that's kind of the, the characteristics that learners are, are striving toward and just a key part of the model. Now, I'm going to share a, 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 a reflection from a student too that I just, I really appreciate so much and I just find so fascinating. And this student is reflecting on roles and characteristics. And what's interesting here in this quote, um, first of all, she talks about, you know, the idea, it's from a digital storytelling course that I'm gonna talk about in a second. But it's really talking about, you know, in telling your own digital story, this, she talks about it as exploring my own vulnerability in the projects. And there is something to that if you're sharing your, your stories. But the insight here that I find so helpful is that by applying the roles and characteristics of meta literacy, of being a meta literate learner, it helped not only in her learning, but in her understanding the other learners in the class so that she was very aware that as she was doing peer reviews and as she was doing, um, working on a collaborative project that she was more aware of how she interacted with those other students and in hoping that it was, uh, that she was being uh, encouraging and helpful along the way. So I do think that that's a really important aspect of this that we learn not just about ourselves, but we learn about those we collaborate with. And in that case, uh, that, that student was in a course uh, I, I'm teaching at Empire State College called Digital Storytelling. And in this course, uh, I'm working with my colleague, uh, Dr. Sheila Aird, and we're doing it collaboratively. She's our European Programs Director in Prague. So we're, doing, we're bringing students together uh, internationally. So students in the US and students in Europe. And that, so that part of it is, has been fascinating but we've really embedded the concepts in a very direct way so that um, in, a, in an introductory selfie video, for instance, where students introduce themselves to the class and to each other, we ask them to also identify with the meta-literate learner roles. So we share the meta-literacy model, we share readings, and we ask them, which of these roles do you identify with the most? And it's just fascinating to see uh, what they come up with. And it really adds a deeper level of learning, learning and self-awareness as part of that process. Um, we also have a midterm self-assessment based on the learning domains. So we build that into it. They learn about the domains and they, they assess their own learning. There's an empowered story that builds into this theme of being a self-directed empowered learner. Uh, there's, a, there's a final team project where they work collaboratively with their peers. And we have a discussion where they actually explore this idea of what is it to be uh, collaborative. And then there's a final self-assessment video where they talk about their learning through the lens of the meta-literacy characteristics that I just described. And it really has, uh, I really think, deepened the learning in the course. So we just wanna close with this, uh, this one quote that I think in many ways pulls it all together. Um, and this is an uh, excellent quote from Garrison, very clear, this idea that to be a self-directed learner is to be a critical thinker. So that critical thinking that we talked about is a critical part of this process, essential uh, in terms of being a meta-literate learner, to being a self-directed meta-literate learner, and especially in today's connected world, uh, these are the kinds of, um, you know, uh, way of thinking, this kind of meta-literacy mindset that I believe can help support that. So those are the kinds of connections we want to make in our teaching, and we hope that this has been helpful. Trudy, is there anything else that you wanted to say about that closing quote? Uh, 
I think you said it all, Tom, um, but I am curious to hear uh, what questions yeah. uh, those who are attending have for us. And I think we're right on time. So, uh, Yako, uh, let's go to the question and answer portion. Thank you very much. I was about to, to remind you about the time, but you were spot on as always. Uh, thank you, dear colleagues. I have seen that there's some questions in the, the chat box. I will start with those. Uh, Dr. Kune, please raise your hand if you want to pose it yourself. Otherwise, I'll just read it. Um, Dr. Kune Krieger asks, um, regarding the very meaningful diagram of the learner at the center of the meta-literacy, um, you just see there, uh, it implies that the teacher is responsible for scaffolding on the left and peers playing a role in the social construction of meta-literacy. She then says, I want to believe that in such a uh, a uh, learner-centered approach, the peers can play an equally important role in scaffolding each other's meta-literacy, and the teacher can become co-learner in a social constructionist view of meta-literacy development. And the question then is, would it be meaningful to add both teacher and peers on each side of the triangle, scaffolding social construction of knowledge? Over to you, I don't know who wants to, to answer. I think that's an excellent idea. Uh, as Tom mentioned, this was a new diagram and um, one that was um, that I just put together a couple of days ago. So um, this will help us think through it in more detail. Um, and uh, I expect that it will be revised. So thank you for those suggestions. Yeah, I think those are that's an excellent idea that and we we were trying to uh, visualize, uh, some of these these learning theories as they connect to uh, meta literacy, which is very much what the the book is about. The the first chapter in the new book, we we really wanted to now that we have this fully formed model, we wanted to present the whole model and uh, talk about it within the context of these learning theories. Uh, and I think the way that you describe the social construction of knowledge is exactly uh, where we are with this. So it's an excellent su suggestion. Thank you. Thank you very much, colleagues. I, I see another colleague from uh, Northwest University, Dr. Suki van Sal asks, or uh, first of all says, thank you for a mind-blowing presentation in the figure of the self-directed meta-literate learner, there's critical thinking. And I assume it associates with the consumer of knowledge. I heard a lot of focus on critical thinking, but how do you view the importance of creativity as producers of knowledge? Uh, do, do, go, go do you ahead. want me to start, Tom? Yeah, sure. Um, so when, um, when that comes up with my students, there seems to be, in some cases, sort of a blockage. They don't think of themselves as creative. Um, and so clearly what they are often doing is indeed creative, but I have skirted away from directly addressing that just because I found that it makes students skittish. It's an interesting point. Uh, I, I, I think sometimes, I, I think there's a whole uh, world out there in terms of literature about creativity. There's a, there's a, there's a MOOC and all kinds of things. It is interesting when we, we talk about it, I think maybe because we're in this world of information where we clearly want to do that. So for example, the digital storytelling course is very much about being creative, artistic, uh, being a digital storyteller. Um, but I think sometimes the word uh, creativity, uh, maybe there's some amb ambiguity to it, or as Trudy mentioned, students may not identify with it. Uh, so I think that thinking about the digital production of information, being a digital storyteller, being a meta-literate learner, um, what are the responsibilities of being a, a producer? In, in some ways, I think that's the language that, that we're using, but uh, the, the creativity part of it is, is important because we wanna spark that creativity in, in students. In fact, we actually framed the book this, this time with, with, a, with a quote that, that talks about creativity uh, in kind of like a, a kind of crafting sort of way that's not technology. And that was an intentional uh, effort, but it doesn't just have to be technology mediated. 
And I'm just going to add to it. I'm just very quickly looking something up um, because, as Tom said, we weren't really thinking about this a great deal when we were sort of creating our goals and learning objectives. Um, I had asked my students to determine if they felt there was perhaps something missing. Um, and uh, a student came up with the idea for a learning objective that we did include um, with a little bit of adaptation, but it's challenge yourself to formulate ethical and novel approaches to build upon the ideas of others that you find exciting and engaging. And I really like that. And I love the fact that that was an idea that came from a student. Thank you. Uh, I just want to add that Dr. Byron Bunt has said um, there's this obsession of focusing on the end product, but creativity can and should focus on a process of thinking. I think that's a good comment to, to link with uh, uh, the current discussion. But I'm moving on to another statement here by uh, say Gilbert Fauré. Uh, apologies for the pronunciation. Um, it's clearly that we have been asking for medical students in the context of clinical research, papers, reports, articles, in other words, reading and writing, plus effective attitudes and behavioral competencies. However, they are not trained on this matter. We are using content creation for such discovery of scientific information and learning, allowing them also to discover societal impact of knowledge and constructivism and stimulate curiosity. I don't know whether you want to comment on that statement. Yeah, first, I, I want to mention, um, I think this idea of the, you know, we've defined sort of roles, we've defined characteristics, I think that those can be adapted. And um, I, I think, for example, this, I, I was just reading too this idea of um, creativity as one of the characteristics. Uh, it's not within sort of our, our model, that word. But I think that all of these can be, uh, these ideas are easily adaptable to different settings. So the, in the one that you had just mentioned, Yako, sort of this more scientific approach. And, and so I think I would sort of kind of work with the framework, but feel free to adapt it as well to a particular disciplinary context. Um, and I think that that's how it can continue to evolve and shape. I think these are in many ways are these kind of broadly defined approach that, that Markham was kind of originally talking about that they don't have, they're not just these discrete skills and that's the whole point of it, that it's, it's really more of a framework that's open and adaptable and transferable to different contexts. Thank you. Uh, there's a very interesting question here by a colleague, uh, Ulo Kayode Aboderen, who's asking, what's the difference between self-directed learning and meta-literacy? Seems both involve thinking. I think that's a nice challenging question. I think there are a number of overlaps. Uh, Tom and I were talking about that as we were preparing today's uh, lecture. Uh, I think there may be uh, some, being more, most familiar with meta-literacy, there are some components to it uh, that uh, go beyond what I understand of self-directed learning, whereas self-directed learning has other components that are um, distinct from meta-literacy. But we really were struck by the areas of overlap between them. Um, Tom, did you have? I agree. I think it's interesting because self-directed learning is one of those terms that you, you've probably find that found this because you're, you're such experts in this area. It's some, one of those terms that's often just kind of used but if you really delve into it, sort of there's some fascinating uh, connections. Even, even that uh, uh, Noel, Malcolm Knowles quote, uh, there's so much that can be drawn out of his work that we could connect to uh, meta-literacy, this idea of being able to uh, uh, self-assess one's own learning. I think that that's to me is, is really key to meta-literacy because it, it pulls in that metacognitive aspect that an individual really understands their own literacy and learning strengths, but also understands sort of, um, they gain an, an awareness of their own sort of gaps in learning or, or where they need to grow as a learner. So I would think that something like that is very much focused on self-direction. And I, I think there's a lot of research potential here to draw that out even more. 
Thank you. Uh, colleagues, I'm just going to do three more questions, and uh, I hope we can still do it within the time. But the, the, there's so many wonderful questions here. Prof. Mariki Habenhoff from Northwest asked, um, you emphasize the role of reflection in innovation. I assume it's essential to keep this in mind when formulating learning tasks where students address real-world problems. Any comments on that? Yeah, I mean, I think that really gets to what Freire was talking about, which is that we are all, we are all you know, in our world, and it's really about that relationship with our world. I think that, uh, as an example, my um, digital storytelling course, the, the final collaborative project, students have to take on, um, the, they have to develop a collaborative digital story about a social cause that they research and then advocate for. So it's interesting, this is a course that's about digital storytelling, it's not about all the social issues, but through their own research, they are just doing some fascinating research, research and development of ideas in a very sort of creative, interesting way that they share and publish with others. So as an example, over the summer, um, students, there was a lot of uh, you know, uh, controversy in the United States about critical race theory and, um, you know, it was actually banned in Virginia by the governor as, as an idea, which is just unbelievable. And our stu students in this course really took on that issue and did such a thoughtful exploration of what critical race theory is. Uh, and they developed it as a video. And there's so much nuance to it that I think it really helps with everyone's understanding of what this is. And uh, another example, a lot of students, because of the pandemic, they, they've done, uh, uh, projects about the pandemic. One student, one group in particular, focused on uh, pandemic art and how we need to really support artists uh, through through the pandemic. Um, other other students have done things on homelessness. Uh, uh, so there's all kinds of um, really interesting social causes that students can address by this kind of idea of learners as collaborative producers. And I'll just. Um, Yes, please go ahead. Uh, well, I was just going to very quickly add that um, something I'll be talking about more in the next Prestige Lecture is having students create content for Wikipedia. And in that, um, we sort of pull together meta literacy, information literacy, and the Wikipedia content creation. But core to this is students reflecting on what it is they are doing throughout. Um, that's part of the WikiEDU programs. Um, recommendation is also something I've been doing. So I think I agree that that reflective process is really critically important. Thank you. Um, I see Katie Greer has asked that from, from Oakland University in the US asks, can you speak to the trait of openness and its importance to meta literacy, especially for self-directed learners? In this, I'm thinking of echo chambers, cognitive authorities, etc. How do you encourage that trait? Hey, Katie, how are you doing today? It's great. I'm so glad you enjoyed, you, you joined the lecture today. I think that's just a, a, a fascinating question. I think that the next lecture, actually, we're, we're, we're going to get into open pedagogy. That's, so that's one uh, exploration of the idea. The idea of open was, was a part of meta literacy from the beginning. It kind of inspired us to really develop everything as sort of OERs and the, the way that we work. Um, but we built it as a characteristic so that students really would think about sort of this idea of being open to different learning situations, different to open to different uh, kinds of technologies. So it's in many ways a characteristic. I think that the, what you mentioned, the idea of being the, the echo chambers and things like that, I, I think that that would also fall within this uh, adaptability in that students need to be much more critical as they, sort of think about these technologies. We want them to adapt as the technologies change, but they also have to be aware of these larger contexts and what's going on there. Um, and I know you've done a lot of research with uh, conspiracy theories too. So I think that you can think of the importance of that kind of balance between uh, understanding using the technologies to, to create knowledge, but also having that critical perspective so that they understand these larger issues of a connected world. Thank you. Um, thank you very much, Tom. Um, I, I know we're running over the time, but there's still a, a couple of very uh, interesting questions. I'm going to stop with this one from um, Bella Hu. 
She says, thank you for this great lecture. I have one small question for you. I saw you had a class with uh, your Albany first year student. It seems very interesting. Is it a particular class special for the first grade student? Is there any theoretical reasons for freshmen to take metalliteracy? Or is it the investigation before the class, like uh, how to know cognitive uh, cognition levels of different grades? I hope I <coughs> formulated that correctly from what she wrote there. Um, yes. So. It wasn't specifically a meta literacy class, Bella. It was a first year experience course where the instructors had a great deal of leeway in um, how they uh, constructed the course. And so I used a product from Lumen Learning um, adapted by SUNY, which include a uh, includes a component on meta literacy that Tom, I, and our colleague Kelsey O'Brien wrote. And so that was a two-week module within the course. Um, I'm just looking at your question here to see what I've missed from it. Um, yeah, and there was no sort of pre-assessment of the students, um, but this was something that was learning about a lot of the components that are traditional in an American first-year experience course. But I included the meta-literacy along with some information literacy, and then um, had the students actually put together uh, a number of the things that they had learned in this project that they did. Thank you. One final question from Emil Hoffman. Um, regarding the student being a producer and adding to the body of knowledge, would it be limited to their own community, right, especially for pre-grad? Uh, a new thing they learn is, is uh, the new thing to learn they learned is new to their own circle at that scale. But I'm not sure how selfies are adding knowledge. Is it perhaps humanizing their classmates? Um, that's what uh, Emil Hoffman is asking. Oh, that's, that's a really interesting question. Um, I think, um, I think that the, it's so interesting, this uh, question of selfies. Um, I explore that in my, another course called Ethics of Digital Art and Design, and we really delve into it and ask that question is, um, how does a selfie compare to a self, an artistic, you know, self-portrait has been, you know, something that's been a part of the art world for, for centuries. So I think we pose that as a question. And I think, I think students really need to understand there's so much with it, with the selfie that they, they need to have a deeper understanding of sort of sharing information. Uh, what are the ethical dimensions of that? What does it mean to share a picture of your, your yourself? There's privacy issues. There's so much with, with that one sort of um, selfie um, that, that I think actually has value in terms of asking some really good critical questions. And that's something really for the students to explore in, in their work. A lot of students will say, it's not the same thing as a, as a self-portrait. Um, others will say, oh, well, there's kind of a, a, a connection because it's very spontaneous. It's, it's kind of like a um, um, uh, sort of a found object or something like that. There's, so there's actually a lot of interesting complexity that we can get to by doing that just one example. But I think it's about having students seeing themselves as a producer of information and understanding what the, the full dimension of that means, including the ethics, the responsibilities, and what it is to be a creator in these social spaces. And just to add to that, um, Emil, I, I think it also depends. You mentioned pre-grad, so undergraduate students, um, what level they're at. So the example that I used for my first year students, they were creating content for other first year students. Um, it wouldn't have been appropriate really for others, but the students that are adding content to Wikipedia are generally juniors and, pr and primarily seniors at the undergraduate level. And so they have a number of years experience in their major. And this is helping them to understand that they do have the knowledge to share content with essentially the world. Uh, so in that case, it does go beyond uh, their own circle or community. Thank you very much. I'm now going to give over to Dr. Byron Bunt, um, who's also part of the UNESCO Chair on Multimodal Learning and Open Educational Resources uh, Executive Committee. So over to you, Dr. Byron. Um, thank you, Prof. Yaku. Um, colleagues, just from my side, I'd like to extend a, a warm word of thanks 
to our two extraordinary professors, uh, Tom Mackey and Trudy Jacobson, for what I could uh, honestly say was a, such an insightful and uh, extremely uh, valuable um, talk they gave today on meta literacy. And uh, I think, you know, looking back in, in summation of this, I think it's, it's incredible to think of this as this framework that we could use. And as they have rightfully said, um, you know, it is adaptable and, and could include various aspects of creativity, for instance. Um, as well as including, uh, of course, um, you know, with our research unit being self-directed learning, that being a component of meta literacy as well. And I can also just say uh, thank you for also uh, looking deeper at critical thinking. It was one of my uh, PhD topics as well. Um, it's good to see that also coming out strongly. I think, you know, especially in this world of fake news, et cetera, um, being uh, critical thinkers of paramount importance as well. Um, so yeah, I'd like to extend a, a warm word of uh, uh, gratitude from the UNESCO Chair on Multimodal Learning and OER, the Northwest University, as well as the Research Unit Self-Directed Learning. Thank you so much, colleagues. I uh, look forward to uh, all the future work you're doing, and we'll definitely go and have a look at that book of yours. It looks fascinating. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you. Before I give you the last word, uh, Prof. Tom and Prof. Trudy, uh, just from my side, thank you very much to you as the two speakers, to Prof. Els, who opened our session today, and to uh, uh, Dr. Byron and Dr. Miriam Dakani, uh, who formed part of the organizing committee. But over to you to the last word from my side, just thank you very much. And I just want to say thank you. We are so honored to be here. We're, we're honored to, to be affiliated with Northwest University as extraordinary professors. We appreciate this so much. Your questions were, were excellent um, and get, has given us a lot to think about. So thank you very much. And we, we want to continue the dialogue and this is a great starting point. Thank you so much. I'd just like to echo Tom's um, thanks to everyone um, for your questions, for your engagement. And um, we do hope to continue the conversation and hope that perhaps we'll see a number of you at the next prestige lecture. Thank you very much um, and may you have a good day further. Goodbye colleagues.